Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. Well, it's been another week of drama and considerable drama, some melodrama as well, in Tamil Nadu as the legal battles and the numbers battle and all of them have played out. And yes, we will discuss what's happened in Tamil Nadu for a while on this program. But we actually want to take a look at a slightly broader issue. Whatever has happened in the case of the verdict that has been delivered in the case of Sasikala and now she's in prison, it has to be noted that this is a case that actually began in 1996. There are other cases that date back to the 1980s, which are still pending for full, you know, uh, a judgment for somebody, somebody being punished or not being punished. In a sense, the fact that these cases sometimes linger on for years, for decades, it's true in high profile political cases. It's also true, by the way, in normal cases, in criminal cases. And the number of under trials who are actually languishing in prisons is something that I'm sure is concerning everybody, including the judiciary. But today on this program, let's just turn our attention to high profile political cases of corruption. There have been a large number of them. Most of them have taken five years, six years, seven years, eight years to get somewhere. In most cases, there have been charges of vendetta on both sides. In most cases, you're still not completely sure whether justice was done or not done. And in certainly the case that in most cases, it took a very, very long time indeed. So what can be done to actually speed up the system? Is there anything at all possible? And that's really what we're going to try and discuss on this special episode of The Big Fight. And joining us to do that, first of all, it gives me great pleasure and it's a privilege to have with us Justice Gyansu Damishra, former Supreme Court judge, who better than her to really help us uh, uh, understand what can be done. As indeed, it's great to have with us Vikas Singh, former additional Solicitor General of India, who can also help us in breaking through uh, what is perhaps causing some of the loopholes. And finally, T.R. Karthikeyan, former director of the CBI. So between the three of you, you should be able to tell us how to get the system moving and moving uh, faster. Uh, then, of course, Mani Shankar Iyer, senior leader of the Congress Party, who's also been analyzing both the situation in Tamil Nadu and some of the broader questions that we are going to be discussing. Shekhar Gupta, senior journalist, is, is with us. Uh, joining us from Chennai, we have Mr. C. Rajasekharan uh, from the AIA DMK and Mr. Sarvanan from the DMK. And joining us from Mumbai is a China NC spokesperson of the BJP. Thank you all so much for being with us. Now, before I get into some of the broader questions, let's just quickly update ourselves on what the very latest is uh, in Tamil Nadu. So let's just go across uh, there to Tamil Nadu to get an on-the-spot assessment of the very latest situation there. The big news from Tamil Nadu, the convicted Sasikala appointed Chief Minister Edapadi Palliswami has won the trust vote. He secured 122 votes, just five votes more than a simple majority. But there was drama, pandemonium and even violence inside the assembly. The DMK MLAs garroled the speaker, toppled his table, pulled down the mics and even manhandled him after he refused for their demand for a secret ballot and to defer the trust vote. In a party, Pali Swami may have won the support of the MLAs, but the big challenge for him would be to secure the larger public support and his cadre's support, which at the moment seems to be in favour of the OPS's faction within the AIADMK. Right. Ma'am, if I can start off now by coming to the broader issues, though, we'll come and discuss Tamil Nadu in a, in a, in a while, but the broader issue on why does it take so long to get justice? <coughs> justice in general and especially in some of these cases of political corruption. And this matter has been on since 1996. In so far as my view is concerned, I have always felt that if you want a fast track justice, fast track court is not the remedy. It is the fast track procedure which is required for speedy justice. If you fast have, track procedure, ma'am, what, what specifically do you mean by that? I mean that uh, this, uh, the, the procedure that is being followed from the code of criminal procedure that has to be revamped and the, uh, and the procedure has to be shortened and a specific procedure should be mooted out by introducing massive amendment into the CRPC. Like uh, initially the matter comes up before the police, <coughs> then a petition is filed in the court, then uh, uh, the, uh, the cry is that the matter should be handed over to the CBI. Then a long drawn process 
what is being done by the police that goes uh, watered down, nothing happens and then the matter when it is handed over to the CBI or special investigating agency, then again it starts from uh, from you know uh, the first stage. So, if uh, like you know we have three uh, categories of case, <coughs> two categories summons cases and warrant cases, but if we were to categorize for the summons cases, warrant cases and along with that if we were to have, have third category of cases for very, very heinous offenses or and the fourth category like economic offenses and a fast track procedure is introduced into the CRPC, I guess we can make a headway in fast track justice. Also then date pay date, date pay date, date pay date, these things just linger on for years. Something which comes up in you know in 1996, ideally you should have final justice being delivered by 1998. And sometimes it's happened and recently there have been some cases which have moved faster. But theoretically, even something like Bofors, you could argue still around and how many decades has it been for that? Well, if you analyze the Jailalita case, there are two things which are very noticeable in this. Firstly, if you see the conviction took a long time, which is very, very uh, deplorable. I mean, the conviction took about, the final trial took about 18 years to come. But the other thing very interesting in Jailalita is that the appeal was decided within two years. That is the High Court and the Supreme Court both, which is unprecedented. So, that is why what the law commission has suggested that if you have politicians, you know, charged of serious offenses, then merely the charge it itself should debar them from contesting elections. Because for a politician to delay a trial till he is not convicted is, you know, a win-win situation. But, the then moment that the open, but then that opens up the other problem that if you are saying just on a charge sheet, somebody a politician <coughs> can be debarred. Charge sheets can be filed on political grounds. Everyone will be filing charge sheets against their political opponents. What happens then? The, well, when I, when I say charge sheet is, uh, when a charge sheet is accepted, that is accepted by a court. It is not accepted by the government. So, charge sheet, you may, FIR can be by the government. Once the judge has applied his mind and felt that this, there are reasons so to. Once a judge says there's prima, prima, prima facie, there is, is some out. evidence out here. So, the government gets, in that sense, the government gets out of it, number okay. one. Number two, that also ensures <laughs> that a, a, a politician will not be interested in delaying the trial. All because right. if he is non suited at, these, at the very inception, and on this, there is a PIL, the Supreme Court has constituted a constitution bench. They are going to hear it in the vacation this year. Okay. I'm going to come to all the politicians and get their sense of it, including, you know, the DMK and the AIDMK in Tamil Nadu. But, Mr. Kandigan, if I can get you in on this. Now, uh, there are politicians who, by the way, have been cleared. They've gone through this entire process for a period of five years, ten years, fifteen years, and then at the end of the day, been But cleared. very often, so, the delay is on the part of the accused, very on often. part of the accused. Because of the money, power or whatever it is, they can buy witnesses, influence witnesses. You know, there is enough, they can employ the cleverest lawyers, they can go to from one court to another court, there is plenty of, we have seen it happening every day. So, we have to have a new law, actually I would say that. Drastic revision means it may not happen because if all the political parties are united, yes, this has to, this should not happen. They have to go in for yeah, an act of parliament is leaving it to the individual judges. Judges and other judges are there. Some people are very strict about the trials. Okay. Some people are really lenient. So there should be a law which is binding on all the courts, from the lowest to the highest court, so that okay. every guilty politician, and not only politician, people holding high office, officers also, are punished speedily or acquitted, whatever it is. Okay. Before I come now to the politicians, uh, Shekhar? Once a judge frames charges, or once a judge accepts a charge sheet. If you were to go, that means trial may still take 5 years, 7 years if not 25 years, but for that period that politician's life is sealed, that politician's fate is sealed. If you accept that from the first judge, the trial court, then why do you have an appeal process? Then in terms of the individual's right, individual should have the right to appeal that judges accepting the charge sheet or framing of charges in the next court, in the next court, in the next court, you do this, you know, it's very easy to say, let's have another law. You know, in this country, we love to pass new laws. That's what I call lollipop politics. L-A-W-L-I-P-O-P. -P, law pass kar do, right? Uh, and bad cases make for bad laws. Uh, if you do that, in five years, I guarantee to you, in five years, 
every politician worth the name in this country will have a charge sheet accepted by some judge somewhere. I am not casting aspersions on the judiciary. And you will have to get, 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 your, get your leaders. Maybe Donald Trump will send his... Uh, Driver to Please. run your country? Sh 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 bola, sh sh bola. So, <laughs> this is no, yeah, okay. No, so, look, so let me look. But let, let me this, just. Let so me, you are saying don't you? You are saying just okay. So his no, no, point, if no, I if I can no, take just because it's taken too long to convict one thief, don't presume that all others are thieves and put them to martial law. First time somebody files a charge sheet against you. If we could actually have a system, and I can't understand why we can't have that system where you actually go through the entire process. Trial, appeal, High Court, Supreme Court, give fast track dates, try and get the entire trial process over as soon as you possibly can, then that takes it away. Why should it take that's, 20 years? That's the second recommendation years. of the Law Commission. Do it in two years and that's, you're done. Vikram, that's the second that's, recommendation of the Law Commission that put these then cases onto fast track. Yeah, so that is, the, that, is that, that a possibility? Is and then I want to come to all the politicians well, and think, get their uh, views. There are two stages. First of all, we have to think about the investigation stage. And thereafter, the court, when the matter is, you know, presented before the court. When I, I would like to illustrate my point, of course, it has nothing to do with the political corruption. When after the Nirbhaya case, I was very vocal in expressing myself that we all of us, anyone who, is, who knows the ABC of the uh, criminal law would know that 161 statement, which is recorded by the police at the time of investigation, is not, admiss is not admissible in law before the court except for contradicting the witness. So, if the police does the investigation, he might be uh, writing 200 percent the uh, correct statement of the witnesses, but that is not admissible. So, I was, you know, uh, uh, I was uh, very, uh, uh, like, you know, forthright in my view that 161 statements, especially in a very heinous offense, should be recorded before, not uh, under 161 before the police, but it should be recorded before the magistrate straight away as 164 statement. That should be put in a sealed cover and, and that should be the end of it and a right, with a right of cross-examination before okay. the court. And I, I for I would. So you're saying the entire procedures yeah, can be cleaned up dramatically. Cleaned up, cleaned up, and and I just, uh, uh, you know, uh, earlier there were three stages of recording of evidence. One was before the police. The other was at the time of you know, uh, uh, you know, commitment when sending the matter before the uh, appropriate court for trial. That when 73 amendment came came into existence, then that stage, the three stages were reduced to two. So if those three stages were reduced to two, two then I guess, you know, if there is a serious thinking about third category of cases, okay. where two stages can be reduced into one. But All right. Let me just come across, let me just go across to Chennai. Mr. Raj Shekharan is there. Mr. Salvanan is there as well. At the end of the day, if you take a look at all the drama that's been happening in Tamil Nadu, your take, uh, Mr. Raj Shekharan, on whether, I mean, look, justice being done now, 20 years later, Sashikala is in prison. How do you respond to all that's happened this week? We have no other go in accepting whatever the Honorable Supreme Court says. But again, I just want to highlight another point, which, see, you have so many cases pending before so many politicians in the country, not only in Tamil Nadu, there are several cases in other states and even in Tamil Nadu against DMK leaders and other party leaders, PMK leaders, all people who talk about honesty and integrity and propriety in politics have cases against them for corruption and uh, uh, chart sheeted and uh, they are all going to the courts on a weekly basis or monthly basis. I disagree with Mr. Karthikeyan. He is blaming the advocates and the courts. But why, why not blame the officers who, who do their job properly, who don't do their job properly sometimes? Okay, so Mr. this kind of Kartikeyan, uh, is it possible and officers happen? are doing their jobs properly? Well, in all, I, that in, all walks of, yes. in all walks of life, you can't say that everybody is doing a perfect job or everybody is honest. There are, you know, Good people, bad people, all that. Exactly. But the system should be perfect. You see, the become the point today is why are we here? Because the people's faith in the entire system of criminal justice is getting eroded day by day. The perception is people you are powerful, you have a lot of money, you can either delay it forever or, or, or you, know, you can get away. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, while China justice, and my money, Shankar, I, before I come to you, Mr. Sardhanan, I just wanted to throw it to you because. It's yeah. not that the DMK hasn't faced its share of problems. Uh, there have been cases in the time of the UPA. Mr. Raja served a certain period uh, in prison, as indeed did Kanimori. 
<clears throat> I, I'm trying to get your sense of where you are feeling, what should be the way to go about this. If you, if you look at the cases against the DMK, we have never shied away from them. This now, ironically, it is now the CBI which is not conducting the case and is seeking adjournments, adjour adjournments in the 2G case. That said, we are discussing an interesting uh, question about, you know, debarring people who have had chart sheets you know, on them. I think that will be opening the Pandora's box because as we have, you, all the panelists have uh, given their opinion that, you know, uh, any, any, any politician will have a charge sheet against him. So the fundamental point here is, see, the courts take cognizance of the charge sheet thinking, assuming that whatever is said in the charge sheet is true. So, just because the charge sheet is accepted or charges frame are going to be the uh, yardstick for you know, disbarring politicians, I am sure the entire politicians, all the politicians from the opposition party will be disbarred by the ruling party because we have a police force which is highly politicized. If we have an independent police force, then what you say is, is, is acceptable. What the view Mr. Vikas Singh said is acceptable. But when you have a very partisan police, when the police people, including the CBI, which is, you know, acting, dancing to the tunes of their political masters, I think this amendment or this suggestion will only wreck havoc in a democratic setup. What is the difference? See, they are talking, the accused persons are, you know, dragging on the system, dragging on the trial. The same thing can be set up with the prosecution also. If the political masters want the other politician to be the opposite politician to be, you know, disbarred by, because of this, they, they, through their prosecuting agency, they can keep on dragging on the trials. A lot of what is being said is really coming to the crux of the problem. And as he very correctly said, there are times when the accused are dragging on the case. There are times when the, it's when the prosecution is dragging on the case. And it's always going to be the suspicious, uh, the suspicion of malified intent. If somebody gets accused, if somebody is put into the dock, if somebody is acquitted, in all cases, there'll be suspicions of malified intent. Anisha Karayar. That is the nature of the beast. Politics is a matter of confrontation. And it is the easiest thing to do to throw mud because mud has a tendency to stick. And the judicial process needs to take this into account. And it can only be taken into account by those who have expertise. In Tamil Nadu, between 91 and 96, it was so widely known that Jayalalitha was utterly corrupt that the people decided, the <coughs> people not only defeated the AIADMK and the Congress party with which is in alliance with them, but also defeated Jayalalitha personally. Now, after the people have spoken so unambiguously, it has taken 21 years for the judiciary to arrive at the same conclusion that ordinary people without legal training had arrived at. In the meanwhile, please note, she has been, Jayalalitha has been chief minister of Tamil Nadu for two full terms and was into her third term. And she used the opportunity to bring down a central government. She was principally responsible for bringing down the Vajpayee government. So she's exercised And, and accused number two almost became power. chief minister also. In this entire process, accused number two, Sasi Kala, almost became chief minister. She may well have become chief yeah, minister quite. if the verdict had been delayed so by a week or two. Absolutely.